Talking Paranormal. So this week, guys, I'm joined by someone a little bit left of our centre. This is Lisa Thompson. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Chris. Right, I'm going to need you to give me the lowdown on um, your your realm of uh, expertise, if you wouldn't mind. Who are you? Who are you? What are you about? <laughs> so um, I am an international best-selling author, speaker, galactic ambassador and channeler, and an intuitive transformational coach. I specialize in past life regression therapy and human design. Um, so I do quite a few things. So whatever That's you want to great. talk about, I am fair game. I would like to start with past life regression because as a ghost hunting team, the team are always saying, wouldn't that be fascinating? And I, because I get, I get a lot of, um, I feel like I'm a stuck record on this channel and, and I'm going to get it over the way as concisely and quick as I can. Spirits have told us that you reincarnate seven times in total um, to, to have eight lives. So... I am already on board with the past life regre regression. I wonder if you can say, no, that's not true, or I've never heard that, you know. Okay, so actually I've never heard it that specific. Um, mm -hmm. and from my experience, I, I disagree with that in terms of the number. I think it's far too low because we are infinite beings and yeah. I, I've worked with many clients over the last um, six or so years, and they definitely have more than eight lives. I should we suggest, Lisa, that we actually dug deeper and the spirit said, well, actually, there is a further lot of after that. And they sort of suggested, or we put it forward, well, not on Earth then, like in some other far-flung part of the galaxy. How about that? Okay, so yes. Yeah. So um, we all are multidimensional beings. And if we think about quantum mechanics, I love, I'm a scientist. I have a PhD in biology, but I love quantum mechanics. And in quantum mechanics, there is no past. There is no future. All yeah. timelines exist simultaneously. And so actually... Um, even though we call it past life regression, it's actually not. It's parallel life regression. And we have all of these lives that we are concurrently living on Earth, but as well as off Earth and in different dimensions as well. Now, you've got me hooked 100% because quantum mechanics is what I always come back to. Yeah. And so, yes, you have me at every bit of that. Okay, so time doesn't matter because if everything is happening at the same time, Yes. Okay. So is there a way for us to affect the other dimensional things or are we, are we only on this one? No, we definitely, it's a ripple effect. Um, yeah. So everything that we do in this earth life, everything that we think has an effect in those other dimensions and those other pa parallel timelines. Good. And so if, um, and that's actually one of the beauties of the method for people who need to heal blockages and limitations. That's mm. a lot of the work that I do with people. Um, because when we get in there, people are able to bring up experiences, whether it's a different life or even this life, and we can make changes at that quantum level. Yeah. And when they come out of the regression, it starts to actually rewire their brain. And then that propagates out throughout all the other timelines. Yes, that actually rings true. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, you, you mentioned a point there what had me think of a thought which has immediately disappeared, but I'm sure it'll come back. Um, yeah, oh, that's what it was. The fact that I thought, well, you know how people are born, maybe some are born happy, maybe some are just born with a, a sadness for some reason, different emotional levels. Is that as you say, a blockage from a previous life? Because that's how I felt. Yeah, that's um, with the experiences that I've had with clients, I would say definitely. It is mm. coming from a different timeline that they yeah. are living. And so that's where we can actually make changes. And we can completely rewrite the story, um, which people are like, well, doesn't that affect other things? It does. 
but only like practitioners like me, we are looking to help someone for their highest and greatest good only. And so whatever we're doing will have that effect. So is there an end game? Are we trying to be the purest energy source we can be? Is that the goal? Um, ultimately, yes, but we don't really achieve that as earth humans. Um, yeah. You know, we can ascend to higher, higher levels, just like a lot of the ascend or all of the ascended masters have mm -hmm. done. But most people are not going to do that in a lifetime. It's going to take many oh. times to really um, play out the human drama to, you know, earth is like a playground and it's like a school. And so yeah. we come here to learn different lessons, gain different wisdom, have different experiences. And ultimately we get to choose whether we want to come back to earth. Some, some people are stuck in a karmic cycle, but the more aware that you become, you can get yourself out of that cycle and you can actually choose what you're going to do when this body passes away. Yes. I mean, again, like you say, it's an education and it's almost, I know this, I'm talking through the Ouija board now, okay? But okay. uh, that we get messages and, and they, all spirits would sort of say the same thing. It's like, you know, you're here to, for the experience and to grow from the experience. It's almost like the, the trials and tribulations, obviously you spiritually grow from that. And yes. I, I get that. I get yes. that. Yes. Yes. And actually, you know, when we are in third dimensional, fourth dimensional reality, which is also known as third density reality, we experience polarity. And we're meant to. So on Earth, we are highly polarized. You know, we see things good, bad, positive, negative, black, white, etc. And polarity is a mechanism of evolution. Mm. And so even if, you know, I in my in my earlier life, I experienced a couple of really bad relationships where I felt very victimized. I was a martyr victim. And the person in that relationship with me was the tyrant. Well, yeah. I was able to get myself out of that situation and grow from it to become an even stronger person and find the love within me. So in that kind of scenario, polarity, you know, it wasn't necessarily fun, but I know that I did sign up for that contract to yes. experience that journey to then come on the other side of it. It does seem like, as crazy as it sounds, we say, I know that life will be tough, but I'm going to try it and hopefully overcome it. But then we come here and we don't have really a memory of that. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing about coming to Earth. Yeah, we get stripped of our memory. Um, yeah. Most people do anyway. There are a few who are able to keep that <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Or, or that, like, I grew up in a spiritual household where I, it was just a reminder of where I came from. And so I didn't have to go through this religious dogma and have all this baggage that I had to later in life unpack. I came in to, to a teacher who was sharing all of this information about where ultimately we come from and source. Yeah. So is the past life regression done through the usual hypnosis we see? Yeah. And I mean, some people don't like that word hypnosis for whatever reason. They just have this like, oh, you're going to make me do something that I oh, don't want to do against my will. But so it's really it's a deep relaxation. And ultimately, we want to get people relaxed enough where their ego is out of the way and we can actually get to the higher self. Are there any dangers of mental damage from revisiting it in this lifetime? Um, I think there can be if the practitioner doesn't know what they are doing. Mm. And that's the thing is you really, for someone who is going to do this kind of session, you really want to trust the person that they know how to guide you. Yeah. And, you know, so not everyone is created equal in that, but mm. there are a lot of amazing practitioners out there. And so you just have to, I guess, trust your, your feelings on that person or get referrals from people. And like for me, I can do all my sessions online. There are some practitioners that they are not allowed to. So if you've heard of QHHT, Dolores Cannon's um, type of regression, 
those practitioners can only do it in person. They are not allowed actually through their training to do it over a computer. And surely in person is in is better if in case they freak out or something. It's it is better, but again, I have had many successful sessions over Zoom. Um, okay. And so it really, I think, again, it's just if the person that is guiding that session really knows what they're doing and the person that is being regressed really can relax into it. Um, mm -hmm. There are ways, very easy ways that if something comes up that's really uncomfortable emotionally or if they start to feel physical um, mm -hmm. effects of whatever they're experiencing, there are ways to get people out of that to see it more from an observer movie kind of perspective. Yeah. So is it a case of one session or is it like, look, look we, need to, we need to talk it through first before we even, you know, we need to relax you and get to know you or? Well, and most of the sessions, they do start with just kind of a back and forth conversation. Yeah. Because that conversation starts bringing up what might want to be revealed and healed. Mm -hmm. And but, so some people, they only need one session and that blockage can be gone. Other people, it might be more like an onion where we can only get to a certain level and then they need to come back again where we can get a little deeper. So it yeah. really, every person's a little different, but, but it really can just be one session. Yeah. I have two things. One, I feel like I drowned in a previous life. Okay. And two, I feel like I was down in my youth because I was mourning a loss that I have no memory of, presumably from a previous life. That's the way that I'm now going. Yeah. Is that I mean, I would say, yeah, if you, it, it's very common um, that if there's a major fear that that is something that did happen in a different lifetime. So people mm -hmm. who are afraid of the water or, you know, my husband is deathly afraid of sharks, perhaps. Mm -hmm he was attacked by a shark or eaten by a shark in a yeah. different life. He hasn't let me regress him to find out what that's about, but yeah. Oh, it's a bit like not in this house, keep it at work sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. He, he believes it works. He just, he's, oh yeah. yeah. He's willing to do certain things with me, but not that. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Okay, so any more questions on past life regression? I guess, so it takes quite safe. And what is the goal? As you said, to relieve blockages, it's it's to relieve there, the anxiety or whatever. Yeah, there, I mean, there's so many different ways that it can be used. And so mm. I have clients that come to me that maybe they have some financial issues in their life that they keep, they have patterns that keep coming up. Um, or they have relationship issues. And it's often when we have patterns that we keep doing the same thing over and over and we're getting the same results. And so it's like, okay, what is that blockage? What's the limitation? Let's get to the root cause of that so that we can shift it so that when they come out of it, that pattern is broken and they can move on with their life in a really successful way. But the other thing that it can do is we can also pull forth talent, skills, and abilities that they have deep inside of them in a different life and pull that into this life. So I've had people come to me that want to be better public speakers, or one came to me, she wanted to be a better swimmer. And so we were able to go to a life or two where they were that, you know, they were the, the top of whatever it was that they wanted to pull forth and then they came back and they had much more confidence and ability in that way. Okay, so taking out the negative aspects from a person, that doesn't take away the learning that we benefit from. Um, no, because there's, <laughs> as long as we're alive, there are always gonna be more lessons. Oh, sure, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's, you do that. What What's Galactic Ambassador? That's obviously intriguing to me. I okay. Just, <laughs> so I have been an, an experiencer of UFO and extraterrestrial phenomena my entire life. Yeah. And my first conscious memory of being taken in a craft was when I was 15. Um, I'm turning 50 um, in nine days. So, you know, I was, so 35 years ago and um, 
it was a beautiful experience and I got to remember it. Um, the other experiences that I had had before that throughout my childhood, they didn't let me remember. But this experience, they let me remember, and this is back in 1988. And when I asked, and if, if you wanna hear more of the story, I'm happy to share what happened, but um, where I was taken, it was kind of a hospital kind of scenario, but we were inside of Io, one of Jupiter's moons. Yeah. And so we're inside, um, I'm being toured around what looked like a hospital, and I see other Earth humans in these different rooms. And the beings that were there and my guide, they looked very human. So one of the questions that I had for him was, are you human? You look human. And he said, no, we are humanoid, but we disguise ourselves so we don't scare you because mm -hmm. we don't want to scare you. We are here to help you. And I said, okay, well, why are we here? Why am I here? And his answer was that if something happened to Earth, we were we were the ones that were being tested to see if we could live in that kind of environment or something similar and and at that time we were still in the cold war you know nuclear threat was pervasive we were on the verge of world war three mm. in the late 80s and so it made sense with that yeah. and then the um at the end i got to see what he really looked like because i asked him if i could um see the true form and so instead of being human, so he was about seven feet tall, pure white skin, big dark eyes, and long red hair. Huh. Um, very extreme in terms of his features. And, you know, with the size, that seven foot stature, and then, you know, the white skin and the red hair, if that was coming down the street towards you, you would likely have some like, oh, I'm gonna cross the street or go the other way. And so that's why they do this disguise essentially. So they don't scare people. But then when I, so I came back from that experience and I thought it was just a dream. And for months I thought it was just a dream, but I remembered the details of it, which normally dreams we don't. Mm. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I was in a spiritual school um, with my mother where the school was high enough profile that we had um, U.S. government officials um, infiltrate the school to spy. So CIA and other people high in the government, because we were th learning things like remote viewing and telepathy and enhancing our clairs. And so um, one of the people that was in the school had been very high up in the U.S. government. He knew about the different alien races that our government actually knows about and even interacts with. So my mother introduced me to him. I shared my story and he, he didn't know that particular ET race that I was with, but he said, you had a real experience. We don't know all of them, but you had a real experience. So at that point I was 16. And so that was a huge thing to be validated as a teenager of this experience being real, that I wasn't making it up. You know, it's not a dream. Mm. And that planted the seed for the work that I do now as a galactic ambassador. And so four years ago, I met my Arcturian family and I was taking a psychic intuitive class. And the first night of class, we were taken on a journey to meet a spirit guide that would help us get extra information. Well, I had met other spirit guides of mine and they, you know, human guides, animal guides. But this time I went to a completely different realm where in front of me were the most beautiful blue skinned beings and they just exuded the purest love and their message to me was you are one of us we are one of you we are family mm. and so when i came out of that i didn't know who they were at the time but i you know we went around class and shared who our guide was and um, one of the ladies in class, she knew some of the different ET races. And she was like, that sounds like you're talking about the Arcturians or the blue avians. Mm. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. Um, I knew about the greys and I knew about my group from IO, but I hadn't really gone down the rabbit hole of, I need to know all the ET races. And so when I went home, I, I Googled what those were. And as soon as I saw the pictures of the Arcturians, I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I saw in wow. this journey. And so since that time, over the last four years, I've developed this really deep connection. I actually am Arcturian. I have a life 
um, as an Arcturian, which then helps channel healing energy to this earth, Lisa. Um, At the same time as living now? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and now I channel them. Uh, or, yes. So I, it started through writing and now I can vocal channel them. Wow. When I get just enough. And so that's been a whole journey, you know, since my teenage years. But yeah fantastic and their energy again they are so loving and they really want us as humans to understand that we are all one we there is no separation and the polarity that we experience really is just that third density kind of reality but the more that we can stay out of out of judgment of each other the more that we can love each other and come from a place of joy then we're all raising the vibration of earth and ultimately we are shifting to fifth dimensional reality okay so arcturian where what else do you know just that specific race what do we know about them okay so they are generally much higher um dimensional beings so typically six dimension and higher um, they really you don't yeah. mean like I mean obviously if we know three or third three dimensions and fourth dimension is what you sort of say alien but how are you putting other layers on top of that do you mean okay. that okay so yes so so if you think about it it's a vibration okay yeah when Got we that. talk about um dimensions so if you imagine a fan with its different blades, when the yeah. fan is stopped, you can see each of those blades very clearly. You press the fan on and the blades start to spin and the faster that they go, they almost turn invisible. Yeah. And so that's what raising the vibration does. And that's ultimately, it's not like there are strict boundaries for these mm -hmm. dimensions, but really you're raising that vibration where, um, the higher that you are being raised, you look invisible, essentially. And yeah. you can see things from that much higher perspective. You have a much grander sense of reality of those lower densities, essentially. Okay, so does that equate to you are becoming, opening your mind to things so you have a greater knowledge, just like people who don't ghost investigate are like, this is all there is. Yes. You know? And I'm like, no, no, there's much more. And then I come to you and you're like, no, you're like at the step below me. And, you know, there's more than you think. Is it like that? You just like the knowledge. Yes. Yes. Right. And ultimately, it all goes back to source. Mm. But um, there's a lot of layers in between. We'll, we'll say layers, I guess. So how the hell would religion affect it? Is that just a human construct? Religion is a human construct. Spirituality mm. is not, um, not necessarily earth human construct. Um, and in fact, through earth's history, we've had different ET races come and interact with earth humans and share spiritual information with them. Yeah. And that's actually, um, where we get some of the, the ideologies of some of the religions like Hinduism and Buddhism and the um, Native American tribes in the US and Mexico have this kind of ET lineage from the Vegans. Um, so Vega is a star in the Lyra constellation and the Vegans are the ones who brought some of that spiritual information to earth. The Pleiadians have also done that. So where are the Pleiadians from? Okay, so the Ple so Pleiades is a constellation Pleiades, right. made, up, made up of several stars. Um, yeah. The Seven Sisters is what it's known as, but it has more than just seven stars in it. And ultimately, though, um, the Pleiadians were from Lyra. They came to Earth. They incorporated a little bit of the primate DNA into their bodies to be able to live here on Earth easier. Yeah. And then there was some warring going on between some different ET groups trying to take control of Earth. The Pleiadians, they weren't Pleiadians yet, they were Earth Lyrans. They decided um, they needed to get off of Earth away from this conflict. So they then colonized the area of the Pleiades. 
became Pleiadians, <laughs> and then ultimately they came back to Earth to be teachers. Okay, yes, because we have seen, um, you know, Egyptian sort of UFOs on the wall, and it's like, did we already get visited by ETs? And yeah, so that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, and actually that that plays right into one of my other non-Earth lives that I have. So um, the Egyptians had a very intimate connection with a group from Sirius, the star Sirius. Yeah. And so they're known as the Syrians and they were here to help teach humans um, medicine and agriculture and astronomy and things of that nature. They um, gave them the sound technology to build the pyramids. And so my job as an as a Syrian actually was to help upgrade the human body to be able to hold more energy. Mm -hmm. And so we were genetic engineers. And so we came and tinkered with that. And there are different groups throughout Earth's um, human evolution where different groups have kind of modified that DNA. And we have up to 22 different ET races in our DNA. Okay. Do they still visit? Are we, are we getting that back and forth between all these different ETs? Yeah. They, um, at some point, it was determined that they couldn't interfere in the same way. They couldn't come down and interact with massive, you know, mm. civilizations yeah. like they did in the olden days. And so mm. we're a free will planet as yeah. Earth. Some of the other planets are not free will. But yeah. so we now have to, if we want interaction, we have to ask for it. And just like with the angels, the angels will only interact and like step in if you ask for that. So the ETs are the same way. And so every individual person can develop their own connection and ask for that. And it's, it's not that, you know, I'm special. Um, I just know that they are out there and I'm willing to actually communicate. Yeah. So the angels, do you mean in a in a holy sense if 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 religion is a construct how does that yeah. work well angels are beings that live in a different realm yeah. and so they there really are angels now yeah. are they ets some people think they're ets mm. and they be because they're not of this earth so it depends on how you define that but i i have a lot of friends that actually can see the angels they hear them um, I, because I didn't grow up religious, I don't have that same connection with the angels, but the mm. ETs do. Yeah. But what I do know about the Arcturians is that the energy that they, they basically give off, it is very angelic feeling. It's the Christ Buddha consciousness, um, archangel kind of energy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Guardian angels, I've heard a lot about. I've had people say that not only the winged type in, in crashes where cars have run into each other and these wings have come and protected the person, okay? But yes. also just simply like in human form, mm -hmm. don't come down this road and then crash, you would have been stood there and that person's gone. So that sort of guardian angels. Angels or ET or... Yeah, um, I mean, we'll call them angels. We can put them in different categories. There are fairy fairies are real too. The fairies are fifth dimensional. Yeah. All of the all of the things that are in our fairy tales and our mythology, they're yeah. all real. They all exist. And they're just in different dimensions. Yeah. And, yeah. Huh. That's a lot to take on board. So is it an infinite array of, of yes. dimensions or is it, oh, it is? Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether that makes things that more of a problem or less of a problem because there are different types of infinity. I mean, where did that, where, is there a beginning? You know, was there, there a creation well, of it? Yes and no, because when we finish whatever this journey in this universe is, then there's the next journey in the other universe. So we I'll do have that. Differences. Yeah, I understand that. But, but, but is there any information on who created all the dimensions, it, you know? Well, I mean, we call it source. I call it source. I don't, I have a, oh, no. I don't, I don't like the God word no. necessarily because of religion. It's human, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
but source energy ultimately in this reality that we are playing in, um, source would be the creator of that. But mm. is there something even outside of that? Uh, quite likely. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even though the Pleiadians and the Actuarians are above us, they're probably just small cogs in a in the bigger yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get exactly. that. So Earth is human society is made up of many different descendants of alien races. It's a multicultural alien menagerie. It is actually. <laughs> we are um, we are very special here as Earth um, because most of the other planets are way more homogenous. <laughs> um, so we have so much diversity, and we really were an experimental playground. Yeah, and still are. And so even the diversity of animals is quite incredible and the plants. Oh, amazing. And so we, we have so much beauty here on earth and so, so many different ways to experience it. Mm. And so really it's how are you looking? What, what window are you looking out of in terms of your life and how you see, see being human and see earth because that will actually create whatever timeline you're in because again, all timelines exist. And so I can be in a state of joy, be in a state of love and have a completely different earth experience than someone who is dwelling in their fear and negativity. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any problem in just thinking, well, it doesn't really matter. I just do whatever I want. No. Or is it like a no, you need to be ascending or um they're all things and it's it's perfect timing. So there are a lot of people who are here just to go about their mundane lives and then you know they if they want to come back and do it again, they'll have that opportunity. So there is no right or wrong in doing yeah. this. All we are here just to have different experiences. We're here to learn and grow and evolve and feed information back ultimately to forever. Source. Yeah. So we're part of a machine. Um, yeah, I guess you could look at it like that. We're nothing more than we're here to pass on something to someone else with a, with a, like the chain of life is like, you know, you've got, you've got parents and you've got your kids. You're just another link in the chain. We're not special in that regard. We're just like, yeah, that's just your job. Um, it is like a job. It is. Um, but ultimately, we're the way that I understand it. We are all one. So you and I, Chris, we mm. are the same. We are just individual expressions. Yeah. Having, having individual reality, even though we really are not separated at all. Mm. And so one way to look at that is and I, I write about this in my book. So if you imagine a disco ball, yeah. okay. So the disco ball is the whole thing. That is yeah. like source, right? And each little window, each little mosaic tile, mm -hmm. when the light refracts off of that, then it sends the light out to the floor, to the wall. And so those individual pieces of light are us individually expressing ourselves. But if you look where the source comes from, we all are from the same thing. We all are one. We're all a piece of the same jigsaw. Yes. Ultimately. Yeah. Hey, that is a lot to take in. Do I need to go down the rabbit hole to ascend? Or do, am I going to ascend just as much by not knowing any more about it? Um. You will ascend, but you may not ascend at the same rate as someone who's aware. Yeah. Because at some point you will become aware. Like and that is power. Pardon? Knowledge is power. Um, so the, yeah. the higher you can get quicker. Yeah. And it it's actually more of a state of being, really. It's like the more that you can hold yourself in a state of joy and coming from love then you're naturally going to be vibrating higher and that actually will ascend you. And so it's more of like getting out of the, the low, like dense energy of the negativity or the fear or the other things that really bring people down. Yeah. 
Um, you mentioned spirit guides. Did you mean them as, as or did you just mean yeah. guide? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about that because that's a fascinating prospect. Yeah, we all have. Um, we have a whole team of support. We all have angels. We have a guardian angel. We have our extraterrestrial guides, family. We have our animal guides. We have like human type spirit guides. So the spirit, my very first spirit guide I met was a Polynesian warrior. And this was um, probably six or seven years ago. And I had, you know, I was living in Olympia, Washington at the time, just south of Seattle. I had been to Hawaii, but it, like I wasn't really like into this Polynesian thing, but that's who showed up in this journey. And now I do live in Hawaii and I know I've got this very strong connection with the land here, but I know that that is one of my guides. Um, just like, again, I have multiple animal guides um, and we all do. And so I, we can take journeys. It's similar to the regression where you can take a journey to meet your different spirit guides. And sometimes our guides are also past loved ones, you know, deceased mm -hmm. loved ones. So they, they come in different forms yeah. and they all, some are there for specific purposes and maybe just for a short time. And then some are there your entire life. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to switch this up on you because I got into the paranormal loving it as I did. I, I was hoping to disprove it. Okay, so I'm going to give you the skeptic now. I'm going to put my other hat on. Okay. Right? So obviously I meet people who are go so exist, Chris. There's no such thing. Okay. Then I've got to think, okay, these these are the key moments that I witnessed that hopefully will convince them or push them somewhere. Let me say to you, right, Lisa, it's all nonsense. Now, now what are your what are your key bits of okay, let me tell you a story. <laughs> You're not in crazy. At least it's crazy. Have you heard her? You know. Convince me otherwise in a, in a story manner. Yeah, well, okay, well, let's talk about ghosts. My my husband, he lived in a haunted house in Tacoma, Washington with his ex-wife. And um, there were a lot of things that would happen, like lights turning on and off and just, you know, the, some of the normal, normal paranormal activity that ghosts do. Well, when they bought the house, the neighbor had told them after they bought the house that, oh, yeah, you, you your house is haunted and other families had experienced this. Well, at some point, um, one of the former owners of the house decided to like put together this reunion of house owners for this house. So uh, there are about 20 of them that got together, including my husband and the, the particular ghost, she was a lady and um, she loved children. And so some of the children, they were grown up now, they were young adults, but they they found out who the lady was. They had done some research. Her, her son had built the house actually in the late 1800s. And um, so they found out who she was and the kids that had grown up, like when they saw a picture of her, they're like, that's her, that's who we used to play with. Yeah. And there's, you know, multiple families having the same experience mm. with, that's hard to dispute. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You've got so you've got me on ghosts. Tick. Now, how do you how do you prove to someone that the 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 whole galactic thing? What's your? I just got to say. Well, I had this experience. You, I can't share that. You know, what? Is there anything tangible other than your experience? Well, we actually there's activity all around us. We just have to open our eyes and. Yeah. And even, um, you know, the U.S. government is doing slow disclosure now, but governments like Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, they have been wide open about, you know, extraterrestrial activity being real, not discounting yeah. citizens. Yeah. And, and so there's evidence all around. And one of the things that we do um, here in Hawaii, we do a night sky watch UFO tour using advanced Gen 3 military night vision goggles. Mm. So what I do is I teach people how to identify the known flying objects or moving objects in the sky, in the night sky, because airplanes and helicopters, satellites, space junk, they all have very predictable behavior. So yes. I, get, I have a PhD in biology, so I'm a scientist, mm. um, but I also then have the spiritual yeah. side. 
no, when you know the known behavior, and then when you're looking at the night sky and seeing moving objects that are doing things that those known objects don't do, mm. then it's easier for people to be like, oh, okay. And there's a lot of activity, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's ramping up. Yeah, I mean, 10 years ago, your argument there would have been, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But now, it's, it's a fact that the government are saying, yes. look, we don't know what these are. Yes. It's like, well, it's not of this world. Yeah, right. so absolutely. You, you've got that backed up now. Yeah. yeah, which, you know, I didn't personally need it, but I know that a lot of our customers that come on the tours, that's what the tipping for them was like, oh, the, okay, the government says it's real, so it's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now's your opportunity because I don't know all about you. So you, there might be something I'm not touching on that that you do and I'm, I don't know about. Tell me what I've not asked about, what you can offer. Okay. So um, so we have talked about the past life regressions. And, and so with that, I actually do help people meet their galactic family and guides. I help them meet their spirit guides. Um, I am able to connect people with their deceased loved ones in that kind of regression as well. Yeah. And what, what I love about meeting the galactic family is that everyone that has had that experience, they really feel that love from that family and it's stronger than they've ever felt here on earth. And and so having that, knowing that, okay, you know, I'm not alone and that we are not alone. That's just very powerful. Now, the other thing, um, I do a modality known as human design as well, which helps you be, I guess, find your purpose and really be more in the flow as an earth human, because we are here to be human, right? We're here to have this human experience and not just be airy fairy up in the stars, yeah. And so human design, it gives you a blueprint of who you were born to be in this specific life. And so I can help people navigate their lives easier and understand their energetic relationships with other people. Hmm. Are these all through, uh, we, didn't, we didn't want to call it hypnosis, but it is all through that kind of thing? No, actually, um, human design, it's a combination of Western astrology, the I Ching, the Hindu chakra system. Kabbalah tree of life, genetics, and quantum mechanics. And it basically, like astrology, it uses your birth information. Hmm. And so your birth date, location, and birth time. And it okay. creates this blueprint from that. Okay. So what are my next steps, our, 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 as a novice, into looking into this stuff that we've just discussed? What, what, are, my, what are my first steps? Well, actually, I would say... For you or anyone else that's watching, um, what what is most exciting <laughs> to you? <laughs> because there isn't there isn't step one, step two, step three. You can start anywhere. And one of the things that the Arcturians are always telling me and sharing to my clients is follow your passion. Where is your passion? Follow that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, please plug your latest book, and I will put up in the edit a picture of it okay beautiful and um, my newest book is connection to the cosmos remembering your galactic heritage and embracing your oneness and um i know you're in the uk and it is available on amazon um in the uk and europe and australia canada and the us so all over wonderful and what have you got planned for your this year next year next year Oh, that's a really great question. I'm I'm waiting for um, my Arcturians to give me guidance as to what they want me to teach next. But I know we are going to be, I do teach a lot of online classes. And mm. so this year I've been focusing more on giving people a basic um, understanding of who the ETs are, why they're here, you know, our relationship to them. And I'm feeling pulled to go deeper into some of the specific groups yeah. so that people really, really can take to heart who they are. Because, and that my job really is to change the fear-based narrative that the media, the U.S. government, and Hollywood has been perpetrating since the 40s. Mm. Because really, 
if they wanted, because a lot of people are like, well, you know, we have to perceive it as a threat and yeah. they're going to take over or they're going to, you know, destroy us. If they wanted to do that, they could have done that well before now. Right. Yeah. So that is not their intention. Are there lizard people living on yes, Earth? There are. <laughs> and are there they are. in top places of, of power? Um, that I that's the kind of rabbit hole that I don't really get into. Um, I do believe that there are some, yes, that are in that, but when we're talking about the reptilians, we have different races of reptilians. And we have reptilians that are living at those different dimensional levels. All so right. as soon as you hit fifth dimension and higher, there mm -hmm. is no more polarity. And so those in the fifth dimension and higher are coming from service, service to others. They're loving, compassionate. And so we have reptilians that are definitely in those higher realms. And then we have some that are polarized like humans are. So... so some yeah. really negative ETs. Are there, are there, we've talked about the pure love ones. Is yeah. there a yin and a yang? Or yeah, know? there are. And again, those are the ones that are existing in this third density reality like Earth humans. And so yeah. when I when I do like talking, I like answering that question because just like with Earth humans, we have some humans that are very loving, kind, compassionate, giving. And then we have other Earth humans that are really like fear mongering, controlling, power hungry, all of that. Yeah. And so we do have individuals within certain ET races that are also polarized like humans. And so some mm. of them yes, could be considered negative, but we have a lot of negative humans too. <laughs> so yeah. I now, and the other thing that I do really understand, and this is something that the Arcturians definitely want people to know as well, is that whatever state of vibration you are in, that is what you attract into your reality. And so if you are coming from love and compassion and kindness, then only that can come into your space in terms of humans and extraterrestrial beings. Mm. If you are someone who is really negative and fear-based and just like really dense, then that's what you're gonna experience. Well, there's the message to take from that. Yeah, that's great. Um, how, where do we find you? Where are you active on social media and such? Okay, so my website is drlisajthompson.com. You can also get there by mysticmanta.com. Um, I also have bigislandufotours.com. And then I am most active on Facebook. Um, I have Dr. Lisa Thompson business page. I have a Big Island UFO tours page. And then I have a couple of groups. I have a connection to the cosmos um, private group. And, um, and then I also have a YouTube channel, Connection to the Cosmos with Dr. Lisa Thompson. So I do a weekly podcast um, where I have different guests on and we have conversations like you and I have been having. All right. I might start there. That sounds good. <laughs> yes. Right, Lisa. Unless you've got anything else you want to mention. Um, well, oh, the other thing, I do also have eight different Oracle decks that I've created. So Oracle oh. decks are similar to tarot cards, but mm. they're different themed ones. And so I have one that really is connection to the cosmos to go with the book. But then I have a whole sacred soul series of animals and flowers and love and colors. I saw those. Yeah, yeah. I do have tarot cards. I don't have oracle cards. What's the difference? So tarot cards, um, they, they're kind of like playing cards where each card has a very specific meaning and it's yeah. consistent across all tarot decks. Yeah. Or cards um, have, depending on who is writing them and designing them, they have different intentions. And so, for instance, my connection to the Cosmos deck is I have 44 different cards that help you actually enhance your connection, help you enhance your clair abilities, like your clairvoyance, your clair audience. Yeah. All of that. And so each card has a message specific to that card. And then 
for instance, Connection to the Cosmos has a practice for you to do to start enhancing that. But some of my other decks, they'll have, you know, the affirmation and the spiritual meaning of whatever that card is. Huh. That's so cool. Yeah, that's a lot to, to take in. I have to look deeper into that. Well, you have opened about eight different rabbit holes for me to fall down, but I, I so that's what I wanted. So thanks for agreeing to come on. Yeah, well, I have really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.